Good evening, everybody. My name is Kevin. Welcome back to the ESP32 product creation journey. We're hoping for a better night tonight than last night. In fact, I'm hoping to stream twice this evening. These will drop separately on YouTube. Um, but we had an interesting stream yesterday that will not make it onto YouTube. It was me fumbling through um, a real live issue that I will recap in my second stream tonight. Um, that I'll do a little bit later. This stream is what was promised last night before everything went south, which is what assembly looks like on one of these puck holders. And so I've, as part of sharing the process, I've shared a bunch about like different component selection and adhesive selection and enclosure design and issues with all of that. And now I just wanted to show um, how that all comes together into an assembly process, which for my first time through, I feel like I did an okay job. Somebody that does this professionally would probably look at this and be like, that is embarrassing. Uh, and that's fine. You know, I'm doing the best that I can. And I would encourage you to do the same. So let's, uh, let's get right into it. Let's switch views here. Okay, so this is pretty much everything we need to assemble a puck holder. And, and I'm not sure how well this is going to work and how well the sound's going to be because kind of it's over here. My microphone is over there. Uh, but anyway, this is the finished product. This is what it looks like. A little nice 12D inset in the enclosure there. Uh, and there's nothing on the back. Like, that's it. Uh, but anyway, this is what we put in a box and ship out to people. And so, this pile of stuff you see here is how we get there. And as part of this, I use a pair of gloves um, for assembly. And I'll explain why in a second. But first, let me put them on. I meant to have them on before we started, but I didn't. So... Let's see. And uh, we'll put that one on. Okay. Nice and tight. And the reason for these is because, first of all, when I found assembling pucks, is that any grease, even if you wash your hands, like the slightest amount of grease like gets on the enclosure and then you end up having to wipe it down, which is fine. But if you just invest in a cheap pair of reusable, not reusable, you know, one use gloves, you don't have to worry about that. There's no grease on them uh, unless you start touching your face or whatever. Um, and so it, it limits grease marks or little smudges on the enclosure as you're putting it together. And... Also, the adhesive for the display, which I'll show here in a minute, is very sensitive to that. So if there's any kind of oils or anything that you get on the parts of the enclosure where there'll be adhesive, on the PCB where there'll be adhesive, it can make that less effective. I'm not as much worried about the battery, but the display, I am very concerned about a solid uh, adhering of the display to the enclosure. And so that's why we have gloves. Okay, this is everything else. Um, except for the box, which is off screen. So let me, and I haven't gotten this down to a perfect science yet, but all my boards come in little single packaged things. I actually keep these in case I want to send a uh, little eBay battery electronics things to other people. These are great, so I hang on to them. Uh, but anyway, here's the board, which uh, you've seen the design process for, and I've shown several times, but I think they look pretty, pretty good. And so a couple of things that I'm still working out is the best order to do all of this in. And one of the things that I found is that it's easier to put the battery adhesive on this while it's just a single board like this and not inside. Um, it doesn't really matter, but these are just small tweaks that I'm um, messing with along the way. And so let's move I've just got a pile of stuff here. Okay, so here is the battery adhesive. I've got several adhesives here. And these just come in these, you know, long strips here with uh, whatever it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16 per. And uh, it's basically double-sided tape that is removable. And I've shown this multiple times. But 
uh, what I do is I grab a piece of it. The gloves are also nice because this stuff doesn't stick as well to the gloves as it does to your fingers. And the way I install this is sideways like this. And as I'm trying to hold it on the camera, it's going to be a little more difficult, but I just throw it on like that. And then now, like I say, because it's not in the enclosure, I can really like just grab it and push it down really well so it adheres really well to uh, the printed circuit board. And then I just leave it. So this side is covered. It's not sticky at all, but um, so that's it. And you can see it's extremely low profile um, adhesive. So, and for those that maybe you're watching for the first time and haven't seen this, this is the kind of adhesive that holds your cell phone battery in where if you grab an edge of it and pull it like this, it'll stretch into this super, super long thing until it releases and the battery um, comes right off of it. So um, that's that. We're done with that adhesive. Okay, the next thing that I do, I'm gonna switch camera views here again. The next thing that I do is I program the firmware onto this and i've done again streams on this there's several parts to that there's the programming of the ftdi chip right here can't see that uh, and then the programming of the esp32 itself and i do that on a raspberry pi that is running a docker image that is automatically built with my github um ci cd stuff the github actions um whenever i push to my main branch my firmware it builds a container that I can pull onto my Raspberry Pi that allows me to program these. And I can't, I've only got so much camera angles and things kind of spread everywhere. So what I will do is I'm gonna switch the view here. I've got, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna SSH into the Pi. I'm gonna have to stand up and go plug this in over on the Pi, but um, let's do that. Uh, each. At whoa, I find it really hard, like awkward, not hard, awkward to type in these. I find there we go. Okay. Okay, and what I do, and I haven't worked out. Um, well, I'll show you. I think it'll happen. So what I what I then do once I'm and I don't normally SSH in from this machine here. I'm normally I have a monitor set up over here that's connected directly to the Pi um, and I do everything from the bench here, the assembly and everything for the purpose of streaming. I'm doing the assembly in this little corner of my desk. And so it's a little awkward. But um, so what I do is I plug it in. So I'm going to go do that. <clears throat> Okay, so that's plugged in over here to my Pi, and then I just have a script that I run, uh, which is, uh, this, uh, dot slash program underscore puck holder sh, and then I pass the version of the firmware that I want it to uh, program with. In this case, it's, it's 0 0.1.5, and so what I'll do is I just hit enter, and I found a little, issue with this um yeah this right here i'm not sure i think it's if you remember from a previous stream we had to make a tweak because it didn't disconnect from the uh, ftdi chip correctly and so the first time through i get this where it says um, i'm not sure how well i'm going to be able to scroll with these gloves on oh they no they they do touch Okay, so it comes through here and it says, hey, we're going to do things like enable battery charge detect, and we're going to set the maximum current supported from USB to 500 milliamps. That's the USB spec max. And we set up the CBUS 0 to be the BCD charger and the CBUS 1 to be power enable. So this is all, and it says rewriting EEPROM content with new uh, EEPROM with new contents. And then what it's supposed to do is disconnect and then reconnect. For whatever reason, that doesn't work when it needs to make the original change. And so all I do is literally run it again. And I'm gonna fix that so that I only have to run it uh, twice, uh, once. 
Uh, but anyway, we do this. It'll do the same thing. It'll say no changes from existing EEPROM contents because it did, in fact, update the FTDI chip. You can see that right here. No change from existing EEPROM. FTDI programmed successfully. And now it says programming device with firmware 0.1.5. And now it's just running um, DSP tool. It's programming the bootloader. It's programming the flash, the partition table, the OTA um, data, as well as the spiffs image. And that's it. Hash of data verified. And you can see that didn't take very long. And so if I can get that to run without having to run it twice, it's a very fast process. Um, okay, let me grab it. Okay, and that's, that's it for programming the firmware. And again, whenever I make firmware changes, I would roll that to 0 0.1.6, automatically builds me a new image. I would just pull it here on the Pi and I could start passing uh, again, 0 0.1.6 uh, to this. And just to sh show, it might be interesting. We go to Docker, oops, images. That version number is the tag. So you can see it, it's kind of hanging off and wrapping here, but I've got this, um, image that I have stored up in ECR and it's just the, the argument I pass to the script is the tag of the image. And so if it, if 0 0.1.6 doesn't exist, it'll pull the image and then um, use it to program. So great. All right. So now come back over to here. So now that piece is done. Okay. Next thing we're going to need is an enclosure. Now they don't, come like this. This is from my sample batch, but it's from the most recent production sample batch where they were saying, is there any final tweaks? And the answer was no. So they sent me like 20 of these already put together and wrapped individually in plastic. The order of 500 of these are um, each half is individually wrapped. So they don't come together like this, uh, like this one. But since there's nothing wrong with these and these are completely, there were no tweaks from this test run, um, I'm, I'm going through them, you know, might as well use them instead of wasting them. Okay, and so the, the trick is they do snap together pretty well. And so for these 20 or so that I have left, like I'm really careful in trying to open them up so I don't uh, break any of the, you can see there's tabs here, 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 and here. So that's it. And so this is where all the action happens on this side. This is really just the shell back um, clamshell that snaps together on it. So uh, what I'm just now remembering that I like to do, which is I'm going to set this over here. Is... <laughs> Hey, what's up, troller? Is I like to have a something down so that it doesn't scuff the front of it. So I'll just put it down there like that. And what we'll do is install the screen. And this is where the second piece of adhesive comes into play. So these again, come in a sheet like this. <clears throat> and you can see there's you know five of them to a sheet. And these I'm still working out the details of how to do quickly and accurately. So, they, again, it's the same concept. There's this piece of release paper here and then the adhesive is on the underside of this blue part. And so, uh, showing you how to do this while trying to talk is gonna be a chore, but. So they just peel off like this. Okay, and so the adhesive, it's, it's clear. So I don't even think, I think kind of at the angle there, you can see it. Uh, but the adhesive's on 
on the this blue transfer. And then what it is, what we can do with it is I've got these notches in here and these guides back here. Uh, let's see if you can get the, uh, there you can see kind of all four of them there. There's these right angle notches up here and then these straight line uh, notches right here. And so what we can do is just kind of line it up and press it into place. And so and then let it collapse down in there. And of course, because I'm talking, I've got it upside down. So let's flip it. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, just like that. And then this is where like I could probably use like a 3D printed something or other to really press this down and adhere it. Um, but what I've been using is just a pair of tweezers. You just kind of push it down in. And this is again where this process could probably be sped up in lots of different ways. Well, I'm going to stop right there and you can see, let's see if I can get a light angle on it. Nope, it's not going to show up. Anyway, you can kind of see it darkening as you push it, push it down into place. Nope. And then I take my little Prusa thing there and just kind of get into the corners. Push that down. And basically what I'm doing here is just getting a really good grab of the adhesive onto the display. And then again, this is where all right, these devices. Um, again, that's where with the gloves, I don't want to get any oil around here so that this adhesive um, is nice and strong. Okay. And now And you may, if you're watching this back, think this is taking a long time just to put one of these together. Again, I'm trying to talk through all the parts of it uh, while also doing the steps, but it, it really, it, it will get faster as I go over time, but it's, it's certainly not taking as long as it seems like <laughs> through the video. Um, okay, so now the, the next step of this, I still haven't decided because I'm a little worried about the ribbon cable releasing from the screen here, because what I've been doing on these so far is attaching the display and then with this hanging off of it, trying to mount it into the enclosure, because I'm a little worried if I mount the display first, um, and let me just show you what I mean here. If the display were mounted in, in, in locked in right there. I don't have a lot of, uh, I'm trying to get a good angle here. I don't have a lot of room to work with attaching this cable, uh, the ribbon cable to the board. And so I've been attaching it first, but I, it does wobble a lot. And I'm worried about that causing damage to where it connects up here to the e-paper display, uh, because I have had some issues. Uh, what I think is caused by um, delamination of the ribbon cable from the display. And so I'm deciding whether I should try it the other way for the first time. Let me just, let's just think about it here for a second while we're streaming. We're not in a hurry. Okay. So that's, let's just say that that's in there and this has got to go in like this. The problem is, and it looks like, so if we're holding it like that, it looks like you should just be able to slide that in easily 
but I found that it can be a, a pretty tight fit. And so I have to hold the ribbon cable. Otherwise it can crimp and then that's going to ruin it too. So I'll mess with that another time. I'll just show you how I've been doing it. All right. Okay, so we open that up. And then there's two, oh no, in this one there's only one line. And sometimes there's two lines to show you where it, um, you can see this white line here to show you that it's in straight. It's just kind of a point of reference. And then that white line is right even with the, see like that is crooked. I don't know if you see that. Yeah, you can actually pretty that, see that pretty good. That would be crooked. I don't want to lock it in a place like that. And so I'm going to pull it off screen, make sure it's nice and straight. And lock it in like that. Okay. And at this point, before we go any further, again, making sure that everything works on this and that the display is good. I do a little test before I actually adhere it down into the uh, enclosure because obviously once it's stuck down in there, if something's not, you know, doesn't work, it's a lot harder to, you know, undo your, your work at that point. So, um, we got a battery here. Oh, another thing that I do is because my first batch of batteries had an issue, I always test every single battery as part of uh, assembly by giving a tug on both of these leads. Cause I had a bunch from my first batch of batteries where these were not in very well. So I just kind of tug them to make sure that they don't release from the, the connector here really easily. So that one looks good. And then what I'll do is I'll plug it in just barely before I set it and see if the display does what I would expect it to do. Oh, I don't think I plugged it in far enough. Ah, there we go. You see the flash. And that's exactly what I would expect, the QR code to display. So a couple things, it makes sure that the ESP32 is working all right. Make sure the display works all right. I will then inspect this a little closer to make sure that there's no like um, graying around and it's really crisp. And so I can't really do that on camera, but uh, so I'm gonna pull it out here for a second and look at it in the light. And it looks great. Next up, we have to remove the screen protector. There's this little green tab here. I have made this mistake with pucks before when I was assembling them, forgetting to take this off and then gluing it in place with this still on it. It actually still looks okay, but it creates a nasty, nasty glare. So I leave that on until I'm actually ready to um, adhere it in place. Okay. Now, for that, again, You've got, um, if there's any spots that I see on this, I just push them down one last time, make sure it's nice and on there. And then I just, you just grab this, the tab, maybe, come on. And just, that pulls right off. Now, I don't know how well you'll be able to see the adhesive. Uh, you can kind of see it there. I mean, it's, it's clear and it's really, really thin, but it just, it goes all the way around to hold the display in. And then this is where, say I don't love how the display gets handled, but I again, use the guide marks right here and here to pop the screen into place. I push it up against those. And then drop it into place. Okay, and now I very carefully let that come down and I just go around and push. And so like you can see here what I'm talking about, this is pushing down and kind of really creating a, le a lever on that ribbon cable. It seems to be okay, but I, the less of that, the better. 
Okay, so I'm gonna pull this off camera. What I do is I just go around and, and pinch all the, the sides. Okay, once I've done that, this just folds back over and just drops right onto the guides here. And the actual tabs on the enclosure are what snap the PCB into place. And so I try and help those in so that there's not a lot of torque or torsion that way. And if it goes incorrectly, there's a real satisfying like snap. Just like that. Okay. And then it's it's like it's not going anywhere. It's in. And the display is nice and secure and seamless. Like before when I did pucks, I had to glue it and all this other stuff, and it was a mess, but this works great. And then what I do is I do another test to make sure that. While doing that, I didn't um, hurt the display at all. And so, I don't know if I pushed that in far enough. There it goes. Okay. And that still looks really good. Okay, just gonna make sure that the screen still looks good. Okay, looks great still. All right, and we're pretty much almost there. Let me throw this stuff away. Uh, all right, now last couple things we need to do. We need to install the battery. So this is intentionally just as long as we need it to be and you the orientation of the battery matters obviously if you do this you're gonna have to like bend this over here and connect it same thing with this and so it's meant to be connected just like this so that this comes and fits perfectly in there and so it's just a matter of adhering the battery just right and also not snugging it up too close to this because it interferes with plugging it in i want it off just a little bit like that uh, and that's how we mount it in place so I actually i need a very top level view which i can't get when it's sitting right here under the camera so i'm going to pull it well right there you can still kind of see it okay So that adhesive is now ready to receive the battery. Okay, and just kind of give that a nice solid push. Okay, and again, the adhesive is really good. Like it's not going anywhere. Like it, it holds it really nice and tight. And again, the whole point of all of this is repairability. Uh, it's something that I'm a really big fan of, right to repair and being able to fix stuff. So if you ever need to replace the battery, this adhesive can just be grabbed from here, pulled out this way. It'll release the battery. You can toss the battery or recycle it responsibly and then just get a new battery, um, put it in here, get another piece of adhesive, and then you're all set. Now the plug-in part is a little tricky and I've thought about plugging it in before removing the adhesive, but now's not the time that I'm gonna experiment with all that. But um, this can be a little tricky to get to plug in. Good pair of tweezers is huge. Cause it's also trying to stick to that adhesive. There we go, just like that. 
and I push it in all the way so it's nice and locked in and make sure the display comes back. It looks great. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much the whole thing and all we have to do at this point is snap together. Bellum, what's up? Nice having you. Thanks for stopping in. All right. There are two uh, tabs on the bottom, one on the top. So I normally rest the bottom ones in first. Oh, I mounted that battery maybe too close to the edge. Now we're gonna have to do the top first this time just because of how I mounted the battery. And then it's really just a matter of snapping it together. Like that. And it has a real satisfying snap to it. And then again, because of the adhesives there, you can't hear the battery wiggling around. And that's it. Ready to go in the box. Um, I have an instruction card that we put in there as well, right on top after I wrap it in some uh, packing paper. Got a box that's just the right size that we put it in. And then that's it. It's ready to go to a happy customer. So uh, that is the assembly process. Maybe, like I said, what are we at? 20, 31 minutes. I did a lot of talking in there. It does not take me 31 minutes to assemble one of these. Uh, I've, I've assembled them one at a time. If I got into a group where I was assembling, you know, a dozen or more, I think it'd be very quick, uh, uh, on the order of a few minutes, not like less than a minute. I, I don't think I'd be that fast with it, but probably somewhere like three to four minutes. I think I could go from all of the materials to an assembled, uh, puck holder that, that you see here. And so, um, that is the process. The, the last part of this, um, I, I can't show because I don't have a, an order right now to do this with, but what I do is I, I'm able to export the orders from our, uh, our store. It, it's in a CSV format, a specific format that exports from there. And yeah, I know, assembly speed running, right? Well, I'm, I gotta work on it. And I can actually, back here on the Pi, I can plug this back in. Sorry, you can't see that. Um, or, yep, up there. So on the Pi, I can run a script that takes that exported file, um, reads the serial number off of the device, creates it and on our back end so that it is associated with a customer based on the order. So there's not a lot of room for manual error there. So it creates everything that I need um, database wise on the back end, uh, associates it with this specific device. Um, because again, I have some of that upfront association that I'm hoping to get rid of in the future, but that's where we're at right now. And then, uh, put it in a box, put a shipping label on it, uh, put, uh Oh, I got to shut. Oh, stand by. More stickers than like I could ever use. I've got a lot of these. So instead of getting a custom shipping box, I just got these three by five stickers. I take one of these off. I put it on the box, the shipping box, and it's cheap, cheap way of getting a custom box. So, uh, and then put it off in the mail and it's done. So, uh, yeah, that's the whole process of assembly. Like I said, way longer than it actually takes. Cause I tried to talk through it there, but, um, I'm pretty proud of, all of the work that went into sort of the design of all of this, making sure everything fit nice, the the enclosure and just how it all came together. The adhesive, I was gluing them with hot glue when I was doing pucks, but now there's this just perfectly, uh, who knew that you could get perfectly cut out pieces of adhesive that work just like glue. I mean, it's a really good hold on the display there. Um, I had to take these gloves off because I'm a sweater and my hands get hot. So anyway, that is, that's it. That's all I want to do for this stream. Just again, show the assembly process and how 
all that stuff that I spent, you know, a year putting together and picking out components for and designing for comes together in this single assembled piece of product that I now ship to a customer. It's just, it's really satisfying. It's just a cool, it's a cool thing. So, um, that I'm going to end this stream. I'm going to be back in what time is it? I don't know. In probably like an hour to talk about the disaster that happened last night with our backend service for all of this and certificate management and kind of talk through some of the trials that I had, how I mitigated it and what I'm going to do going forward on it. I think that will be interesting and helpful to uh, people. And so uh, that's going to do it for this stream. Bellum, thank you so much for dropping by. Always great to see you. And I hope everybody has an amazing rest of their day. For those that are joining the live stream, I'll see you again in an hour.